On September 3rd, 2010, a massive cargo jet took off from Dubai heading toward Germany. It was UPS Airlines Flight 6, and on board were only two people, the captain and the first officer. No passengers, just a plane full of packages. But something terrifying was hiding inside that cargo hold. And just 20 minutes into the flight, it revealed itself. The cockpit began to fill with thick smoke. The pilots couldn't see, they couldn't breathe. Radios stopped working. And the plane, one of the biggest cargo jets in the world, became almost impossible to control. The crew fought to save themselves. They tried to turn back, but whatever was burning inside the plane wasn't going to stop. What brought down this jet wasn't weather. It wasn't engine failure. It was something hiding inside the cargo hold, something small, but incredibly dangerous. And what could possibly go wrong so quickly on a flight like this? This is the tragic story of UPS Flight 6. It was a normal, scorching evening in Dubai. September 3rd, 2010. The kind of day where the heat wraps around the airport like a blanket. At Dubai International Airport, cargo planes rumbled in and out like clockwork. Among them was a giant, a Boeing 747-400 freighter, tail number N571UP, fresh from Hong Kong earlier that day. After a short stop on the ground, it was ready to head west toward Cologne, Germany. On board were two experienced men. Captain Douglas Lamp was 48 years old, from Louisville, Kentucky, had been with UPS Airlines for over 15 years. More than 11,000 hours in the skies, 4,000 of those in this exact aircraft model. Calm, professional, the kind of pilot others trusted. Beside him was First Officer Matthew Bell. He was 38 years old from Sanford, Florida. A rising talent, 5,500 hours under his belt, still early in his 747 career, but trained, certified, and ready. The aircraft itself? It was practically brand new by cargo standards, just three years old. It had passed a major inspection only three months earlier. Powered by four massive General Electric CF-6 engines, this freighter was among the last Boeing 747-400s ever built before the newer 747-8 took over. A beast of a machine, trusted, reliable. At 6.53 in the evening, the jet lifted off from the runway, climbing smoothly into the Dubai sky. Everything looked perfect, but within minutes, something invisible was already beginning to change. How did one of the most advanced cargo jets in the sky spiral into chaos so quickly? What went wrong? And could it have been prevented? Stay with us because the next few minutes will uncover a terrifying sequence of events that even the most experienced pilots couldn't escape. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss stories like this. Now, let's dive into what really happened next. At first, everything was going as planned. The aircraft had just departed from Dubai International Airport at 18.53 local time, heading toward Cologne Bonn Airport in Germany. But as they climbed into the skies that evening, far from the dangers of the ground below, something changed. Unseen and undetectable to the crew, a small deadly fire broke out in the aircraft's forward cargo hold. For a few moments, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. The cockpit was calm, and the crew followed their flight plan with precision, as they had done on countless other trips. Then, at 1915, a warning message appeared on the cockpit's upper ECAS display. Fire main DKFWD. It was a chilling message that no pilot ever wants to see. The fire had started, and it was spreading fast. This was no small issue. It was a full-blown emergency, and Captain Lampe knew it immediately. The crew quickly declared an emergency, but the fire's speed was already overwhelming. The thick smoke began to pour into the cockpit, flooding the area with an acrid, suffocating haze that quickly obstructed everything in sight. Lampe and Bell now had to make critical decisions under extreme pressure. As the smoke intensified, their ability to communicate was severely hampered. The radio panel was obscured, and the pilots could no longer directly contact Dubai ATC. They were under the control of Bahrain's ATC, but communication with Dubai was impossible. The crew had to rely on other nearby aircraft, using them as messengers to pass along important instructions. Three, Boeing 737-800s, 
operated by Fly Dubai and a Dubai Royal Air Wing 747-400, became the lifeline between the stricken 747 and the air traffic controllers who were trying desperately to assist. In a desperate bid to regain some control, Captain Lampe disengaged the autopilot. The aircraft, which had been cruising smoothly just moments before, was now in manual hands. Lampe's training and experience kicked in, but as he took control, the situation quickly spiraled out of his grasp. The fire had burned through the protective liner in the cargo hold, destroying critical flight systems. Most alarming of all, the fire had completely destroyed the aircraft's primary flight control system, leaving Lampe without elevator control. It is the ability to pitch the plane up or down. The situation was rapidly becoming life-threatening, but even then, the crew didn't give up. Lampe's next move was to put on his oxygen mask, but the thick smoke continued to overpower him, and at 1920, his mask failed. With the smoke taking its toll, Lampe lost consciousness, and the plane was left under the control of First Officer Bell. Bell was now in charge with no direct communication, no proper flight controls, and a plane that was beginning to fall apart. His training kicked in, but as the fire continued to burn, it became evident that the aircraft was too far gone. Bell was told to aim for runway 12L at Dubai International, but as the plane descended, the landing gear didn't extend. Bell now faced an even more critical issue. The aircraft was too high to safely land and he had no choice but to turn, hoping to make an approach to a nearby airport. But there was a deadly mistake. Bell turned in the wrong direction, away from the airport he needed to land at. By 1942, UTC radar contact was lost. The plane was now flying on fumes, spiraling closer to the ground. In a last-ditch attempt to save the flight, Bell attempted a sharp turn, but the 747, at a shallow angle and high speed, was destined to crash. The plane struck the ground in an unpopulated area between the Emirates Road and Al Ain Highway, barely missing the bustling Dubai Silicon Oasis. It was a miracle that no one on the ground was harmed, but for the crew, the nightmare had reached its tragic end. The right wing of the 747 hit the ground first, and the aircraft skidded several meters, sparking a massive fireball. The explosion was heard by locals, and the flames lit up the night sky. It was a devastating end. Both Bell and Lampe were killed instantly, the fire consuming their lives and any chance of survival. The investigation into this devastating tragedy revealed some shocking findings, but there's still so much more to uncover. Stick with us as we dive into the detailed investigation and uncover the truth behind UPS Airlines Flight 6. The crash of UPS Airlines Flight 6 prompted immediate action from authorities, and the investigation that followed was a thorough and intense process involving multiple agencies and experts from around the world. The United Arab Emirates General Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, spearheaded the investigation into the disaster with assistance from the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB. But it didn't stop there. The Bahraini government also launched its own investigation into the crash, and UPS, eager to understand what went wrong, sent their own team of experts to join in the efforts. The crucial pieces of evidence, the flight data recorder, FDR, and cockpit voice recorder, CVR, were recovered from the wreckage and sent to the United States for detailed analysis by the NTSB. These black boxes, which record the aircraft's flight data and conversations between the pilots, would hold the key to understanding exactly what led to the tragic crash. It wasn't until July 2013, almost three years later, that the GCAA finally released its official report. And what they discovered might surprise you. The fire that led to the crash wasn't some freak accident. It was caused by something much more serious, the auto-ignition of a cargo pallet filled with more than 81,000 lithium batteries. Yeah, those same ones we've all heard about catching fire. Along with those batteries, the pallet also had other highly flammable materials which helped the fire spread like wildfire. This was a major red flag right from the start. But it gets worse. The report revealed that air conditioning pack one, which helps ventilate the cargo hold and keep everything cool, had been shut down for reasons no one could really explain. Because of that, 
Toxic smoke began to pour into the cockpit, making it almost impossible for the pilots to breathe. And worse, they couldn't see or properly control the plane. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the cargo liner that was supposed to protect the aircraft from fire failed when the blaze started. This made the situation even more dire because the fire was able to spread unchecked, causing more damage than anyone could have predicted. With all of these factors at play, the fire quickly got out of hand. The pilots were already fighting an uphill battle, and in the end, there wasn't much they could do. It was a tragic combination of events that led to this heartbreaking outcome. What's so unsettling about this is how a series of small failures and unforeseen circumstances turned a routine flight into an unimaginable nightmare. In the end, his tragic event remind us how vulnerable we are when so many things can go wrong at once. It also shows the importance of safety protocols, how critical it is to stay ahead of the potential risks that come with transporting hazardous materials, and how every detail, no matter how small, matters in the aviation world. If this story has made you think deeply about the fragility of life and the importance of safety, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to keep learning more about the stories that shaped aviation. And leave a comment. What do you think could have been done differently to prevent this tragedy? Until next time, stay safe, stay curious, and keep flying high.